everyone, it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. I'm actually sitting in my next project. I actually found this chair about a year ago at the thrift store. It was only $10. I scooped it up and unfortunately it's been living in our garage for about a year now. So since last summer and since we're in quarantine and I am crafting my stash, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to drag this guy out and finally give him the makeover that I have had in my head. Initially, the chippiness of this chair is what really made me fall in love with it, but once I got it home, I really thought about sanding it down and painting it, so I'd love to know down in the comments, what would you have done? Would you have painted it or would you have kept this chippy look? Ultimately, I did decide to leave it as is. I thought it had a really unique look, so I went ahead and decided to just reupholster the seat and also work on the back, which I'll show you in just a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and start with reupholstering. I took it into my studio and got out all of my tools to start pulling out all of the staples. And I even found some tacks in there, which was kind of cool. Um, and I just used a pry bar to get some of those staples out. I had to use my hammer to get some of those tacks out. And I also removed the batting and the fabric. I added all new batting to the inside. I just got this from Walmart. It's a low loft polyfill flat type of stuffing that I use the entire roll on the seat and just cut it down to size so it would have those angles shaped onto the bottom. I have tons of drop cloth on hand that I've already pre-washed and pre-bleached so that's what I'm going to be using for the upholstery of this piece and I just laid it out and used my brand new mini iron is he not the cutest thing I'll link him down in the description box along with any of the other supplies that you'll see in this tutorial today but I just made sure to get all of the wrinkles out before placing my seat cushion back over the top and then I cut it down to size. I made sure there was plenty of fabric that will fold over the back so that I can later cut that down to size. I'm going to be using this staple gun. It actually hooks up to my air compressor, but you can use a regular hand stapler too. It works just fine. This one just makes it a little bit easier. I start by folding the fabric over the top and bottoms of the seat cushion and then I worked on the sides and then later worked on the corners. You do want to kind of stretch it as you go pull and then add a staple, pull, add a staple. That way you get a nice even uh, stretch across your whole cushion. also be really pretty to add a decorative design to the back of the chair so I'm using my silhouette cameo and I created a design in my silhouette studio program on aura mask stencil material I'll make sure to link that down in the description box and I'm just weeding out all of the parts that will actually be painted onto the back of the chair so my design essentially and then I'm using a masking tape type style of transfer tape and I will link that down below as well so you can check that out. I did make sure to use a ruler so I could get it as straight as I could onto the chair before removing the transfer tape off the top and then I used my chalk paint in it's a Waverly brand chalk paint in the color elephant and used a foam paintbrush to add the paint to the top. I did two coats of paint before removing the stencil. Now this part takes me back to my very early days on YouTube where I made a lot of wood signs and you guys all love the part where I would remove the stencil and reveal the design and it definitely took me back. I missed stenciling and it, this made me want to get back into doing it more. So you basically just take off all of the stencil pieces that were left behind and all you see is the beautiful paint. And then I added my cushion back onto the top of the chair. I just used some wood screws and my drill and screwed them in from the bottom into the top to make sure that the chair cushion would stay in place. And then you can see here the beautiful before and then the after. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of extra love to bring something back to life or give it that style that you were hoping for. Thank you. 
this project definitely gave me the itch to do some more furniture revamps and even more stenciling. I really have missed that. If you enjoy thrift flips or repurposed and refinished furniture, you can click the playlist that you see on your screen. If you click the round icon, you will subscribe so you don't miss the new DIYs that are to come. And thank you all so much for watching. I will see you soon. Bye everyone.